Hey everyone. Welcome to today's lesson on pathology of the knee. In this lesson, we will look at some indications for these studies and compare them to normal images. A more detailed review of specific anatomic structures of the knee is provided in the knee anatomy lesson. It is important to remember there are many pathologies seen in MRI. These are just a few common ones a technologist should be familiar with. Let's get started. An MRI of the knee is useful for many pathologies. Some common ones include meniscal tears, ligament tears, or Baker cysts. First, let's address meniscal tears. Meniscal tears are often caused by twisting injuries during sports, degenerative changes in older adults, or trauma. They may also be further classified as bucket handle, flap, or radial tears. They appear as high signal defects within the meniscus on T2-weighted images or regular disruptions on proton density-weighted images. On the first image, you can see the dark, wedge-shaped medial meniscus fully intact with uniform low signal. On the second image, you can see a bucket handle tear with a high signal defect extending through the meniscus, indicating a clear disruption. Now let's look at the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL. ACL tears commonly occur during sports involving pivoting or sudden stops like soccer or basketball, or from direct trauma. On MRI, a normal ACL appears as a low-signal diagonal band connecting the femur to the tibia on sagittal images. Tears manifest as discontinuity or high-signal disruption on T2 or PD-weighted images, often with bone bruising in the lateral femoral condyle or tibial plateau. On the first image, you can see the dark ACL fully intact. On the second image, you can see a complete tear with a wavy, discontinuous ligament and surrounding edema. Posterior cruciate ligament, or PCL tears, are less common, typically resulting from high-impact trauma like dashboard injuries and car accidents, or hyperextension. A normal PCL appears as a low-signal, curved structure in the intercondylar notch on sagittal images. Tears show high-signal discontinuity or thickening on T2-weighted images. On the first image, you can see the intact PCL with uniform low signal. On the second image, you can see a partial tear with increased signal and partial disruption of the ligament fibers. Medial collateral ligament, or MCL injuries, often result from valgus stress, like a lateral knee impact in sports, while lateral collateral ligament, or LCL injuries, are caused by varus stress or direct trauma. Normal MCL and LCL appear as low signal bands on the lateral aspect of the knee, best demonstrated on coronal images. Tears or sprains show high signal edema or discontinuity on T2 or PD weighted or proton density weighted images. On the first image, you can see the dark MCL intact with no edema. On the second image, you can see a MCL tear with high signal edema. A Baker cyst also known as a popliteal cyst, is a fluid-filled sac that forms in the popliteal fossa, the area behind the knee joint. The cyst develops due to an accumulation of synovial fluid, often as a result of an underlying knee joint condition that causes excess fluid production or leakage. On MRI, they appear as a well-defined high-signal fluid-filled sac in the popliteal fossa on T2-weighted images. These are often used with a fat saturation imaging option. Contrast media is typically not needed for this pathology. On the first T2-weighted image, you can see a normal popliteal fossa with no cystic structure. On the second image, T2 fat saturated, you can see a Baker cyst with a high signal fluid collection behind the popliteal fossa and uniform suppression of fat tissue to better demonstrate the bright cyst. This has been an overview of common pathologies of the knee seen in MRI. Thanks for watching.